Aldrin heard that Armstrong would be the first because Armstrong was a civilian, which made Aldrin livid. Attempting to stem interdepartmental conflict, Slayton told Aldrin that Armstrong would be first since he was the commander. While this was enough for mission planners to make their decision, Aldrin and Armstrong were left in the dark on the decision until late spring. Slayton told Armstrong the plan was to have him leave the spacecraft first, if he agreed. Armstrong said, yes, that's the way to do it. The media accused Armstrong of exercising his commander's prerogative to exit the spacecraft first. There were several differences between Eagle and Apollo 10's LM-4 Snoopy. Eagle had a VHF radio antenna to facilitate communication with the astronauts during their EVA on the lunar surface, a lighter ascent engine, more thermal protection on the landing gear, and a package of scientific experiments known as the Early Apollo Scientific Experiments Package. Along with a technician, he helped Armstrong into the left hand couch at 654. In the 30 orbits that followed, the crew saw passing views of their landing site in the southern sea of Tranquility about 12 miles southwest of the crater Sabine D. The site was selected in part because it had been characterized as relatively flat and smooth by the automated Ranger 8 and Surveyor 5 landers in the Lunar Orbiter mapping spacecraft, and because it was unlikely to present major landing or EVA challenges. At 12 hours 52 minutes and 0 seconds coordinated universal time on July 20, Aldrin and Armstrong entered Eagle, and began the final preparations for lunar descent. Collins, alone aboard Columbia, inspected Eagle as it pirouetted before him to ensure the craft was not damaged, and that the landing gear was correctly deployed. Armstrong exclaimed, the Eagle has wings. As the descent began, Armstrong and Aldrin found themselves passing landmarks on the surface two or three seconds early, and reported that they were long, they would land miles west of their target point. During the mission, the cause was diagnosed as the rendezvous radar switch being in the wrong position, causing the computer to process data from both the rendezvous and landing radars at the same time. When Armstrong again looked outside, he saw that the computer's landing target was in a boulder-strewn area just north and east of a 300-foot diameter crater, so he took semi-automatic control. Armstrong considered landing short of the boulder field so they could collect geological samples from it, but could not since their horizontal velocity was too high. Throughout the descent, Aldrin called out navigation data to Armstrong, who was busy piloting Eagle. Now 107 feet above the surface, Armstrong knew their propellant supply was dwindling and was determined to land at the first possible landing site. Armstrong found a clear patch of ground and maneuvered the spacecraft towards it. Some large rocks jutted out of the dust cloud, and Armstrong focused on them during his descent so he could determine the spacecraft's speed. A light informed Aldrin that at least one of the 67-inch probes hanging from Eagle's footpads had touched the surface a few moments before the landing and he said, contact light. Armstrong was supposed to immediately shut the engine down, as the engineers suspected the pressure caused by the engine's own exhaust reflecting off the lunar surface could make it explode, but he forgot. Three seconds later, Eagle landed and Armstrong shut the engine down. Aldrin immediately said, okay, engine stop. Aka out of detent. Armstrong acknowledged, out of detent. Auto. Aldrin continued, mode control both auto. Descent engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. Aka was the attitude control assembly the LM's control stick. LGC address 413 contained the variable that indicated the LM had landed. Eagle landed at 20 hours 17 minutes and 40 seconds coordinated universal time on Sunday July 20 with 216 pounds of usable fuel remaining. Information available to the crew and mission controllers during the landing showed the LM had enough fuel for another 25 seconds of powered flight before an abort without touchdown would have become unsafe, but post-mission analysis showed that the real figure was probably closer to 50 seconds. Apollo 11 landed with less fuel than most subsequent missions, and the astronauts encountered a premature low fuel warning. Armstrong acknowledged Aldrin's completion of the post-landing checklist with, engine arm is off, before responding to the Capcom, Charles Duke, with the words, Houston, tranquility. Base here, the Eagle has landed. Armstrong's unrehearsed change of call sign from, Eagle, to, tranquility base, emphasized to listeners that landing was complete and successful. Duke mispronounced his reply as he expressed the relief at mission control. Roger, Tuan Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Two and a half hours after landing, before preparations began for the EVA, Aldrin radioed to Earth. This is the LM pilot. The schedule for the mission called for the astronauts to follow the landing with a five-hour sleep period, but they chose to begin preparations for the EVA early, thinking they would be unable to sleep. 
Preparations for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to walk on the moon began at 2343. Six hours and 39 minutes after landing Armstrong and Aldrin were ready to go outside, and Eagle was depressurized. Armstrong initially had some difficulties squeezing through the hatch with his portable life support system. At 2.51 Armstrong began his descent to the lunar surface. Climbing down the nine-rung ladder, Armstrong pulled a D-ring to deploy the modular equipment stowage assembly folded against Eagle's side and activate the TV camera. Copies of this video in broadcast format were saved and are widely available, but recordings of the original slow-scan source transmission from the lunar surface were likely destroyed during routine magnetic tape reuse at NASA. After describing the surface dust as very fine-grained and almost like a powder, at 2 hours 56 minutes and 15 seconds, six and a half hours after landing, Armstrong stepped off Eagle's footpad and declared, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. A Armstrong intended to say, that's one small step for a man, but the word A is not audible in the transmission, and thus was not initially reported by most observers of the live broadcast. When later asked about his quote, Armstrong said he believed he said, for a man, and subsequent printed versions of the quote included the A uh, in square brackets. Other analysis points to the claims of static and slurring as face-saving fabrication, and that Armstrong himself later admitted to miss peaking the line. About seven minutes after stepping onto the moon's surface, Armstrong collected a contingency soil sample using a sample bag on a stick. The TV camera cable remained partly coiled and presented a tripping hazard throughout the EVA. Still photography was accomplished with a Hasselblad camera that could be operated handheld or mounted on Armstrong's Apollo spacesuit. He described the view with the simple phrase, magnificent desolation. Armstrong said moving in the lunar gravity, one-sixth of Earth's, was even perhaps easier than the simulations. It's absolutely no trouble to walk around. Aldrin joined him on the surface and tested methods for moving around, including two-footed kangaroo hops. The astronauts planted the lunar flag assembly containing a flag of the United States on the lunar surface, in clear view of the TV camera. Aldrin remembered, of all the jobs I had to do on the moon the one I wanted to go the smoothest was the flag raising. But the astronauts struggled with the telescoping rod and could only jam the pole about two inches into the hard lunar surface. Aldrin was afraid it might topple in front of TV viewers. Before Aldrin could take a photo of Armstrong with the flag, President Richard Nixon spoke to them through a telephone radio transmission, which Nixon called the most historic phone call ever made from the White House. Nixon originally had a long speech prepared to read during the phone call, but Frank Borman, who was at the White House as a NASA liaison during Apollo 11, convinced Nixon to keep his words brief. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. This certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. As you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this Earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done, and one in our prayers that you will return safely to Earth. They deployed the EASEP, which included a passive seismic experiment package used to measure moonquakes and a retro-reflector array used for the lunar laser ranging experiment. Then Armstrong walked 196 feet from the LM to snap photos at the rim of Little West Crater while Aldrin collected two core samples.